Hey guys, Chase with Sherpa Equipment Company. Today we are going to be installing our Harvard rack on the second gen Sequoia. Um, we've already removed the factory roof rack. If you need help doing that, there's a link in the description. Otherwise, we're going to jump into this install. So to start, we're going to go over what you're going to receive in your package from us. Uh, you're going to have your side plates, crossbars, your fairing. You'll have fairing hardware. You'll have your rack hardware. You'll have your mounting feet and your rubber spacers. Also, some rubber plugs. So to get started, uh, right off the bat, if you removed your factory rack, we can set all of that to the side. We will not be reusing any of that. Um, we have all new hardware. So first things first, we're going to grab our plugs. We're going to get two of our M6 uh, bolts with the bonded washers. And we're going to go up and plug the holes that will not be covered by our rubber spacers for our mounting feet. You'll notice uh, your Sequoia's roof has a lot more holes than we have mounts. So we're going to go ahead and start plugging those. Um, the holes we're going to need to plug are the second hole back from the front uh, with no threaded portion in it. We're going to be plugging the threaded hole behind that one. And then near the middle mounts, we're going to be plugging this oval shaped hole. Now, the other holes that you'll notice in your roof are going to get covered by our rubber spacer or uh, our bolts that will mount, your, uh, mount to the roof. We're going to start by plugging our holes that do not have threads. So you'll have received four plugs. These are rubber plugs and they should be a very snug fit into that hole. You'll have to maybe kind of work it in, twisting, and get that to seat all the way flat down to your roof. Once that's flat, give it a good twist, make sure it's seated. That hole should now be sealed. And then we're gonna take our second rubber plug and go ahead and plug the oval shaped hole back near our middle mounts. Again, you're gonna have to kind of work this into that hole. Uh, this is supposed to be difficult because you want a good, nice, tight, watertight fit. Uh, now that we have our two rubber plugs in on the driver's side, we're going to take our M6 and our bonded washer. You're going to want to make sure the bonded washer is seated all the way up against the hex head of the bolt. We're going to use a little bit of blue Loctite just to run down the threads. And then we're going to just thread this in. And we'll thread this all the way to the bottom and we'll tighten down when we get there. Now we'll grab a 10 millimeter socket and we're going to squeeze this bonded washer down until you start seeing the rubber squeeze out of the sides of the washer. Once you start seeing that pop out, you'll know that it's uh, sealed your roof. Now we'll repeat the same process on this side. Uh, again, we're gonna do plug up front. Nice tight fit. Get it seated all the way to the roof and then plug in the rearmost um, oval shaped mount on the middle mount, or sorry, hole on the middle mount. Once they're both seated, take your M6, a little bit of blue Loctite, a lot of blue Loctite. And then we'll bottom this out to where a bonded washer makes contact with the roof. hand tight, grab your 10 mil socket, and again, tighten just until you see the rubber start squeezing out of the sides of the bonded washer. So next, we are going to get our mounting feet installed onto our crossbars. So I'm move the fairing out of the way, and we'll just go one at a time. We're gonna drop our T-nuts into our crossbar. To do this, the rounded side is gonna go towards the bottom of the channel. You'll just simply drop it in, make sure both sides of the T-nut are grabbed by the crossbar. Once those are both in, you'll grab your mount, grab your quarter 20 hex and uh, quarter inch washers, and we'll install the mount onto the crossbar. Uh, when installing your mounts onto your crossbars, you're gonna wanna make sure the bottom face is facing outside edge of the crossbar. And you'll just tighten these bolts into the T-nuts just enough so they hold, but um, you still wanna be able to move your mount back and forth easily because we'll be adjusting them on the roof. And now we're gonna repeat this step with the next two crossbars with our middle and rear mounts. Uh, so our mounts are all assembled onto the crossbars. So before we bring those up to the roof, we're gonna grab our rubber mounting spacers and we'll put those up first. So you'll notice you'll have uh, six rubber spacers. Um, you're gonna have two short ones. These ones are for the front. So all we're gonna do for right now is line up the hole with the hole in the roof. And then we're gonna work our way down the truck. The rest of the four larger ones uh, are not side specific and do not matter which they, if they go in the front or middle. 
So we'll do the same thing. This will cover up this hole in your roof. And then with the pressure of the mounting foot down when it's bolted in, that will seal that other hole off. Now that all of our rubber spacers are staged, all of our holes are plugged, we can go get our crossbars with the mounts on them and get them bolted to the roof. So now to mount our crossbars onto the roof, we're gonna take the remaining 10 M6 bolts and bonded washers. Uh, if your washers are not installed on your bolts, you're gonna slide the bonded washer all the way down to the head of the hex. Uh, once we have all of our bonded washers installed on our hardware, we will start with the front mounts and we'll take them up to the truck. Uh, one thing with our racks, it is very important to note that there will be a small notch on the bottom face of the mount. That notch will always face the front of the vehicle. If that notch is facing backwards, uh, your crossbars won't line up with your side plates and the rack will not sit correctly on your truck. So once you verify that that notch is facing forward, you can position it over the rubber on the front of your truck. Uh, so now it's lined up with the rubber and your hole. We're going to go ahead and take our M6 and find that hole in your roof and then we're just going to get it started. We're just going to get it finger tight for now. Um, we'll come back through and tighten everything up later on. We're going to do the same thing in the middle and rear. Again, noting that the notch on the bottom of the mount is facing the front of the vehicle. All right, so now that all of the crossbars are up there with the mounts uh, finger tight, we're going to go ahead, grab a 10 mil and a tape measure. We're going to go through, tighten down our mounting feet. Um, and then we're going to measure up the crossbars to make sure they're center. Then the side plates will go on next. So now we're going to tighten down uh, our mounting feet to the roof. We're going to do the same thing we did earlier when we were covering up the hole. And we're going to go until the bonded washer just starts to squeeze rubber out of the sides. And we'll do this on all the mounts. So now the mounts are tight. Uh, now we're going to move our focus to getting the crossbar squared away. Um, to do this, we're going to grab a tape measure and measure from the inside face of the mount to the outside edge of the crossbar. And we're going to do this on both sides. And we're going to look for the same number on both sides. So we've already measured these ones out. And a good starting spot for these two, uh, for actually all of these mounts, is about five and a half inches. Um, every truck's a little bit different, so you might have to adjust forward and back a little bit. But uh, five and a half is a good starting spot. Uh, once we get all those squared away, you're going to grab your 7 16 and we'll tighten the bolts coming from the bottom of the mounting foot up into the crossbar. You're gonna to wanna to work your way all the way around the rack uh, and tighten these bolts going up into the crossbars and just tighten until you hear the T-nut start to bite in the crossbar and then give it a little bit more. No need to over tighten. So now that the crossbars are centered, the mounts are tight uh, and all the crossbars are tight to the mounts, we're gonna go ahead and put up our side plates. Um, this is a good step to have a friend help you if you have one available. Uh, otherwise, you can do it by yourself. It's a little bit awkward because this is one of our larger side plates. I'm going to be doing it by myself, so I set up a few rags just to protect the paint. Um, the easiest way I find to do this by yourself is just start with two bolts and one side plate. Get the middle mount started first, and you'll line it up to the slot designated for the crossbar. It's a shorter slot. And just get one bolt just started. This way it keeps the back off of the paint. And then I'll move to the front crossbar and do the same. Just getting this bolt started, just enough to hold the side plate up. Grab a third for good measure and get the rear started as well. That way we have one in each crossbar. Okay, so we got one bolt started in each of the crossbars. Um, we're not gonna worry about moving it forward, back, anything like that yet. We're just gonna get the other side plate up and we'll adjust after that. So now both side plates are up, everything's still loose. Uh, we're going to just slide the side plate forward until we're happy with the curvature of the side plate matching the curvature of the roof. Uh, once we're satisfied with that, we can go ahead and tighten this side plate down. Uh, I would start with just one or two bolts just to hold it in place in case we need to adjust later. Um, we'll match this to the other, or the placement to the other side, and then we'll put crossbars in. Now that we got the rack positioned where we want it on the vehicle, we're going to take the remaining of our crossbars, minus one. Uh, we'll set one aside for the fairing. We will install that later. So we're going to take the remaining crossbars here and space them evenly along the top of the rack and uh, get all those installed. So on this rack with the amount of crossbars we send, uh, you should be able to put one crossbar per slot. Um, obviously you can change up your setup depending on your use, but to get them evenly spaced, that's what we recommend doing. So the remaining crossbars have been installed. Um, they're tightened down and evenly spaced to about as even as we could get them. Uh, again, that is completely up to you how you set those up. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and install the fairing. Um, the easiest way I find to install these fairings is lay a fairing out, 
line your crossbar up uh, end to end with the fairing. And then we're going to make an imaginary line from our bolt holes to the crossbar. And that's where we're going to install our T-nuts. Um, this doesn't have to be perfect. We can adjust once we get the fairing on. Just gives us a good base to go off of. So once we get all six T-nuts in, we will uh, take the fairing and set it down on the side plate. So once you have your fairing on, you can kind of line up your holes with the uh, crossbar below and you'll find your T-nuts down there in the slots. Uh, you can just get them started. Um, don't even go finger tight, just get them, get the threads going. And then that way you can uh, slide the fairing back and forth to find your other T-nuts if they are not under the holes. This one's already lined up, so we'll get that one started as well. And it looks like on this one we'll have to slide a little bit. That's no big deal because we've left everything loose. Find our remaining T-nuts and get our socket buttons threaded in. Now that all of our socket buttons are started into the crossbar, go ahead and slide this to the end. We want it to be flush on both ends. Once it's flush, uh, we can tighten down our bolts into the fairing. Okay, now that our fairing's tight to our crossbar, again, I'm gonna put a rag up on the roof on the opposite side, just so we don't damage the roof. That'll give us a little bit of padding for the fairing install. Okay, so we're just gonna install this uh, as we would any other crossbar, just being careful not to damage the roof when we set it down. But we'll line it up in these slots, and before we worry about adjusting it up and down, we'll just get the T-nuts, or sorry, not the T-nuts, the socket button started into the crossbar. Once all your hardware started into the crossbar, we can go ahead and line our fairing up. Um, on all of our racks, we like to have the lowest point sitting about a quarter inch off the roof. Uh, you can also line this up by feeling where the uh, edge trim just is flush with the uh, edge of the side plate. Once you're happy with your position, go ahead and tighten it down and tighten down the other side as well. So the install of the Harvard is complete. Uh, it's a good idea to go back through, make sure all of your hardware is tight. It's also a good idea after driving around for a day or so, go back through, make sure it's tight once again. After that, you should be all set. Uh, otherwise, the truck looks great. He's all set to go. If you have any issues with the install, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.